I can make a Mo Mamba song. All I would have to do is do like. <laughs> and then somebody in the background that's like. It's mumble rap, right? I could do it. So hey guys, what's going on? It's Alex from Fitment Industries and we are talking about Camber again because the last time we talked about Camber, we had Elon Musk in the house discussing some of the basic fundamentals of Camber and a lot of you guys in the comment section were like, yeah, that's kind of cool, but you kind of need to like talk about the function and the, 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 the fancy versions of Camber and like the, the technical and all that stuff. And we kind of saw a lot of people arguing back and forth about what Camber is and what Camber isn't, what it's for and what it's not for and what people use it for and what people want you to think you use it for. So today we're going to be talking about some of the myths about cambered wheels and just camber in general. So before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and of course check out fitmentindustries.com if you need wheels, tires, suspension, airlift, Accuar, Eibach, ST, KW, Silvers, we're getting into it. So the first myth that you're going to go into when you talk about camber is that people will say is that camber is the number one killer of tires in the world. And let's talk into specifics. When it, talk, when it goes into excessive camber, Yes, camber can essentially damage your tires. It can have excessive wear on a single point of the tire versus the rest of the tire, but that is not ultimately true. A lot of times you'll actually see toe destroy tires a lot easier and a lot faster than camber ever will. A lot of times a little bit of camber won't actually hurt a tire that much depending on the overall function of the vehicle. So in case you didn't know, a lot of people try to do around negative three degrees of camber for track use. And what that essentially does is it helps counteract rolling during high speed turns. What happens is because of the force, it'll straighten out the wheel, then when you go back into the straights, it'll put the wheels back at the slanty boy style. But three degrees really is nothing really slanty boy about it, but at the end of the day, it's actually for a functional point of view. A lot of people go into excess camber to fit wide wheels under stock fenders or over fenders, and as a result, a lot of people that don't like cambered vehicles will ultimately say that it damages their tires to an excessive point of view. And it does, but not as bad as what you would think, unless it's an extreme, extreme, extreme. You'll probably see toe damage and take out a lot more tires than camber ever will because of just the amount of force that the tire has to go through with incorrect toe versus an aggressive amount of camber. Another myth about cambered wheels and just camber in general is people that do have slanty wheels will say that it has function. And I would say that it does have a little bit of function if the car is being seen on the racetrack or if it is being seen on any sort of parking lot for autocross. But at the end of the day, a lot of times when you're going to see slanty wheels, especially on the road today, you're not gonna see it for any functioning purpose whatsoever. It is 100% an aesthetic thing. It's an aesthetic point of view to get big lips, concave wheels to fit under bodies, under fenders, or I'm sorry, over fenders and things like that. It's not really going to be anything that's meant for function. In fact, when you do have a lot of excess of camber, you're going to see that actually go away if it's on an air suspension vehicle because the wheels will straighten up once the vehicle is aired up. So if you hear a lot of people that have negative 10 or negative 12 degrees of camber talking about how they have battle arrow and that it's for the track, they're just straight up lying to you on their IG feed. It's just not something that has a whole lot of functioning use to it, but that's okay. There's not a lot of people out there that are going to be using their actual vehicle for a full track built use. So we won't nag on you guys too much if you're using something to make it look like it's for the track if you don't always use it for the track but don't try to assume that if you have a cambered setup that you're gonna be able to fool many people into saying it's actually for function use because it's not another myth is that camber can be adjusted with just camber plates and after you put the plates on you just put those things to max and you just pray that your wheels fit and that's not true either there's a lot that can go into actually setting up your camber for your vehicle a lot of times when we talk about alignment we talk about camber we talk about caster we talk about toe and there's a lot of other things that go into adjusting camber and toe and all the things that make your vehicle feel right when it comes down to going down the road if you're just going in and throwing in camber plates to make your car slanty boy you're not gonna have a good time because there's a lot of things that you can do with your vehicle that will essentially allow you to get the camber you need maybe to fit those wide wheels into your car if you're really looking to go for a static stance or a slammed look that you'll have to also do in addition to just your camber plates. There's a lot of suspension components that will actually help you in terms of adjustable plates and things like that that will get you the necessary camber without essentially maxing anything out. And at the same time, you'll have a better ride quality because you'll essentially be making the camber effective throughout the entire suspension component instead of just one specific part that you bought on eBay for $90. So we would recommend that if you're gonna go into doing that look, the whole stance, the whole camber look, the whole static look, if that is your thing, 
we recommend that you do it right and actually go into figuring out what parts you need and what upgrades you need to make happen so that when you end up doing that, you don't end up with a very terrible ride with your wheels going all over the place inside your fenders and of course ultimately ending up damaging everything from your lips to your fenders to your tires to your inner wheel wells and everything in between because when dialed in correctly even when you do an excessive amount of camber which we will say is like six to ten degrees you can actually still run a good chunk of that negative camber when dialed in correctly and experience not a whole lot of well, I guess, terrible driving experiences. Now, there are people that are gonna get mad that we're saying that, but at the end of the day, there are people that build their car for form, there are people that build their car for function, and there are people that build their car for the track. If you're one of those people that are building it for the looks, that's fine. Go do whatever you want, it's your car. You're free to, I mean, it's your car. But if you're going to do that, we usually recommend that you do it right. And that would go with any sort of build that you're trying to do, whether it's for form or function, is to do it right the first time. And if you need help in terms of building on a budget or just building a car in general, you can check out our other videos where we talk about it like 20,000 times because we just like to help you guys. And at the end of the day, you know, we have to deal with the returns when you buy the wrong parts because you didn't do the research right the first time. And so it's actually helping us and helping you but it really does help us. just trust us if you guys have a question just come on just drop it just drop it below and probably one of the final myths i would say about camber is the fact that it ultimately only originated in japan now if you guys didn't know the japanese car culture is probably predominantly the single biggest hub of people doing crazy creative wonky that you could potentially imagine to their cars. Japanese culture has a way of doing very just different styles. You see that with Buzoku style, you see that with whole different like, I would say Inuyasha, but that's an anime and I can't remember what the actual term is. There's like a lot of things that come out of the Japanese culture that a lot of people in the United States pick up and ultimately run with because they think it's cool. It's the same reason that people overseas in Europe think Mustangs are cool. Right, so when you're looking at a lot of culture things that are bringing into the United States, people think that a lot of cambered styling comes from Japan. And while the excessive side of camber definitely does, there actually is a lot of play in terms of where the camber culture came from in the SoCal area just as much as it came from overseas. You have to remember that excessive camber in terms of the wheels actually doing one of these is something that did come from Japan. And there's a specific style of excessive camber that came out of that culture but there's not a lot of people that do that as much here in the United States instead it's much more of an over fendered heavy excessive camber culture but not something that is absolutely ridiculous it's more of something that's a play on a highly modified stance static vehicle for car shows so it's something that actually came from the SoCal culture and it's something that has came in from a lot of other places in the United States you've seen a lot of growth coming from a lot of the slammed enough super cold gas Gatlingburg, things like that where people are consistently pushing the envelope in terms of a creative build and that is ultimately feeding its own culture of creating something new and different and a lot of the cambered vehicles and camber in general that's going on to vehicles especially in today's day and age is because of people doing that for these shows and doing things for these different community events you do see camber on the track and we're definitely not going to take wind or anything away from the fact that camber does have a function purpose and that's a myth in and of itself is that that camber does have a functional purpose, but not a lot of people know how to use it. Camber has a very specific fundamental purpose in terms of the alignment of the vehicle as well as high performance driving when you're on the track. But if you just plan on bringing it to negative six degrees of camber and ripping around the track and praying that you're gonna have more traction, you're definitely doing it wrong. Camber has a specific purpose and if you're not utilizing it correctly, you'll ultimately result in less traction path than more traction path around the turns and you'll find yourself wiping out a lot more often. If you want tips on how to actually measure for camber, you can let us know in the comment section below where we can kind of teach you a couple things about that if you do plan on setting up your car for the performance setup. But we, today, we're talking mostly about the car show guys and the cambered setups that they're running with their wide wheels and their stock fenders or over fenders. Do you think we missed a myth? Let us know in the comment section below. Those are a couple things that we're hearing from you guys and we wanted to clear the air. So if you're looking for wheels, tires, suspension, hit up fitmanindustries.com. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries. Again, we will see you later. Peace.